I'm here with Tommy of Camelot to talk about The Awakening, out March 17th on Napalm Records. Is that a Calgary Flames hat that you're wearing? Yeah, sure is. Good, good eyes. Uh, do, you, do you have a passport already? Like, we're trying to claim you as quickly as we can. So do you have your passport ready? Not, not yet. I think that's going to take me at least five years. But um, I'm, more, I'm, I'm a permanent resident, if that counts. That's good enough. You're Canadian. You're yeah. Canadian. <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, in the rest of Canada, we're Canadian. We, we got to take all the good ones that we can. So uh, that's why I'm asking. We, we need to, to claim you as I'm our... Glad, I'm glad you consider me the good, one of the good ones. That's good. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you, let me start off with this question for you. Does the history of the band and what fans have come to expect from Camelot um, condition or create certain uh, certain elements that drive where you guys go on any given record? You could say that, I guess. I mean, we definitely have a, a legacy, you know, that, we, that we're very proud of. And we want to bring forth, you know, some of those... Uh, um, elements every time, but then that being said, we're, we're also not afraid of being a little bit experimental and uh, trying maybe some new modern, more modern stuff or more heavy stuff, but still keep that kind of spine from the melodic uh, uh, era. And uh, I think with this new album, I think we did really, you know, we 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 were thinking we should bring back more, or we wanted to bring back more of the melodic touch and the, and the hymn kind of kind of song. <laughs> from the old days, but then put it in and kind of dress it up in a new suit. And I think you guys actually delivered that really well. Uh, and, and I thought it was a record that also gave you a lot more room to maneuver as a vocalist. And, and I'll get into that. But before that, let me ask you about this. Uh, since you've joined the band, how much has the creative process evolved? Yeah, I mean, basically, really, from the first day, I was... Uh, um, you know, working on on the Silverthorn album, the first album with me, and I was given free reigns. Basically, it was up to basically up to me to to uh, write the vocal melodies and the lyrics together with with uh, the other guys a little bit. But but uh, I really had to dig deep and and do my homework and see what what was music, Camel of music and vocal lines and lyrics all about, and and what's the essence and how how do I kind of tap into that. But it's getting easier, easier. You know that being said, um, with every every record, I think easier to tap into that. And now it just feels kind of like second nature. And like like you said, I think I I'm maneuvering in a different way vocally on this uh, new new album. What sets this album apart from all the its predecessors, in your view? Well, we had you know COVID hit, and we had a lot more time uh, to um, you know because usually you you're you're touring and uh, then there's a kind of a short window uh, to um, start creating new music, and and we're not a band that writes on the road. We're we're like we're very <clears throat> tuned into the to the live experience when we're out there, and not uh, not thinking about new music. But then coming out of that, having to uh, write very not very fast, but rather quickly, um, as opposed to this time, you know, we we came out of a touring cycle. Pretty much COVID hit right away, uh, and uh, we had we had a lot of time, you know, to re uh, reinvent ourselves and and go back and see is this really good enough and and uh, you know you could spend some more time on the recording stuff. Uh, I spent all my time recording, you know, at home this time. I didn't, uh, I wasn't uh, able to go to Germany as usual. You said that you had more time. Sometimes more time becomes a problem because then then you get lost in the weeds. When you have a deadline, sometimes you streamline things. Uh, how, how do you guys navigate that that aspect of having more time, but also not getting too much lost into the finer details of every single thing? No, oh, it, it happens. You know, it, like you said, having not having a deadline and and uh, having that uncertainty of of having oceans of time is not a good thing usually. Uh, for for you know product production wise or for the productive part, uh, it can also be um, uh, yeah the opposite of good. So we what we what we felt uh, was that we had a deadline and then it got pushed and it got pushed and it got pushed. So we always had a deadline uh, to work against, which me, made it uh, a little bit better than if we didn't have a, a deadline at all. But uh, we were working. Um, 
of course, you second guess more things if you have more time and you, you rework stuff that you might not have, you know, have had to rework. But uh, I think, you know, all in all, you know, given what I think the quality of the stuff that I think we have on the album, I think it's uh, it turned out really, really well for us. Uh, fans of the band, of any band for that matter, when there's a record coming out, at, at least on, on our YouTube channel, one of the questions I get asked when I post a review or on, when we're talking about an upcoming record is, how heavy is it? Is it heavy? Like, everybody wants to know the, the, the heaviness of, of any record. I felt like this album was actually very heavy, more heavier than what I was expecting. Do you have that same perception of the overall sound experience of this record? Oh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very much just like in the in the middle of it still so i haven't really zoomed out uh, in a way but uh there's some heavy stuff and i think the mix mix maybe uh is a little bit heavier on the guitars like it's a little more prominent uh, uh a little, maybe a little bit more modern guitar sound but uh, and that might might sway you in in, in that direction but uh, i don't know if we were think we didn't think about like we, we're going to write more heavy stuff we just uh, we just uh, wrote um, thinking of uh, the live situation. Like we've played a lot live the last decade, and uh, we have a pretty good feeling of what will work live. And I think we incorporated that a lot in this album. We were thinking about the live situation, like how can we how can we make stuff that will go over well live. And I think the whole album basically, uh, you know, contains songs that we will play live one day you mentioned the production and i felt like the other aspect of the production on this record is that and not only allowed the guitars to be a little bit more upfront, if you will but it also gave you more room uh, as a vocalist and and also allowed the orchestrations to not drive the experience of every single song they were there but some songs you you almost forget about them because you're so concentrated on the guitars and on the on the vocals is this also coming from what do you guys know that it works better in a live setting? Yeah, it's funny because we've heard it a lot, uh, many times with people saying like that, you know, like the they listen to the album and it's, and it's great, but then they come to the live situation and it's like, oh, we, I, we didn't know how heavy you guys were or like how, how driving the music was because, you know, it's, it's always been that fine line between mixing the guitars and the um, uh, orchestration and the vocals in a way that it sounds organic and, and and beautiful too because you know it's 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 not count out is not about just you know balls to the wall or or pedal to the metal it's uh it has to be an experience and, and kind of a romantic one so but i think we we did that on the new album too but but uh, just allow the you know a little bit you know a fresh breeze of uh, guitars and uh, you know, to to be in the picture as well, which is, um, I think we did a really good job and, and Jacob did a great job uh, mixing it. It's almost like a, a live album recorded in the studio, if, the, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. At least that's the vibe that I, that I got from it. Uh, this is the, the first record with Alex on drums. Uh, what does he bring to the to the table as far as Camelot is concerned? Well, first of all, he's just a great drummer. I mean, he's uh, very versatile, and he's kind of a drum professor, if you if you will. And he um, he's the one that will join me in the back lounge on the you know when we were on tour in the bus and play paradiddles in the back lounge when I'm trying to take care of my voice. Uh, so he's you know he's a great guy. He's always smiling, always happy, positive, very funny. Um, you know, he's just perfect match. To be honest with you, in the band, and, and brings that kind of lightness that we, that some of some of us others maybe lack sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you who. <laughs> uh, I I can say I am. I'm, <laughs> How much of the band's growth and your own personal growth as an artist are intertwined? I think it's it goes hand in hand. To be honest, I think every album. And, uh, you know, you learn something new, you become a different person and um, not only within the music, but also with outside the music. So I think that's that's um, what makes you can't a band can't write the same album twice uh, because you're not the same people uh, like you move on already when you make it, make a song in the next day, week, month, you're a different person already because you have that experience. 
So um, hopefully we'll just keep evolving with how we evolve as human beings. I think that's how it works. I've, I've already said this before. I felt like this album gave you a lot more room. It's, it's an album that I consider very vocally centric on you because you're able to really showcase everything that you have to give. Uh, did this allow you to uh, go in different avenues that maybe normally you wouldn't go down? I think I just took more space. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've done this for a long time. I mean, also with my other band, Seventh Wonder, it's been, you know, it's always been my, my thing, you know, creating vocal lines and, and uh, arrangements with the vocals. But uh, it's been, of course, they're different bands, so you, you can utilize different sides of yourself. But I think I maybe utilized more of, of my, you know, the way I'm diverse as a singer um on this album because of i just we had more time and i i um i was left to my own devices <laughs> for a lot of it. i just thought it was phenomenal that when i'm listening to the songs you you really you're one of those vocalists that really uses your voice as an instrument and i felt like on this album uh, the listener is able to capture that essence across every single track like the way you emphasize certain words in order to give certain connotation, in order to give certain atmospheres, certain sensations, emotions, it's not easy to do, but you do it flawlessly. Uh, does that come from training or just God-given talent? Uh, well, it's. It, I've always, um, uh, thank you for uh, first and foremost, but uh, I think I've uh, I've said it before to some other people. I, I don't consider myself a singer per se. Uh, if if I'm thinking about myself, I don't think I'm a singer. I'm more of a, a storyteller, maybe. And I think storyteller, then you have to be, you know, be able to tap into the emotions of what you're actually performing. And uh, for me, it's it's a no-brainer. I can't do it any other way. It's just, uh, um, you know. I hear something and I and I f and I already hear it in my head and I, I just got to perform it the way I hear it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to be happy. And it's because I, you know, the, the emotion is the most important thing for me, uh, that people feel something. And um, uh, the, my works, the work that I've done that I'm most proud of, proud of is the ones that make people feel something. Like I read the comments like I was crying or I was happy or it helped me through this. And, and I think that's the that's the most powerful thing to, for me, and that's actually why I do this too. Because I, I can I can also not do it any other way. It's just how it ends up when I when I interpret things. You mentioned being on the back of the bus on the on the lounge area with Alex uh, and and working on your vocals. Did you do something? Because you guys tour a lot. You play a lot of shows. Is, is there, do you have a regiment that you follow in order to keep your voice fresh for every single performance? Yeah, it's definitely not fresh for every singer. For <laughs> singers, I'm I'm way better a singer at home, but uh, um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's tough for I think any vocalist um, on the road because you're you know you're abusing your voice kind of you you're singing multiple times a day, maybe every day. You don't get sleep and you don't eat, and um, uh, you know very well. So yeah, it's tough and and. I just have one of those voices. I have to take care of it. Otherwise, it's it's going to be blown out in two shows. So I I um uh, yeah I actually went to a vocal coach once. I I've taken two lessons in my life, and I I, <clears throat> I went to one one person and she said she's asking me to sing and I sang a little bit and she's like wow uh, what kind of music did you say? you do you're doing again i'm like yeah I'm in a metal band she's like you gotta stop that <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like what and it's like you, your voice is not made for metal it's made for it's it was called a light lyric tenor and uh it means it's very delicate and you need it's a storytelling voice but it's not me necessarily made for screaming over loud guitars <laughs> so I, I guess i've just adapted and i try to keep you know i, I try to keep um healthy by you know for example not straining myself um making sure that the vocal technique is as good as i can because i didn't like as you said i, I didn't do many less lessons which kind of bites me in the ass sometimes but um so yeah i'm exploring new techniques and and just trying to make it 
you know, seem like it's easy to sing. Are, are you one of those vocalists that is really quiet while on tour drinking hot tea or red wine in order to keep your voice fresh or or do you get into arguments uh, on the back of the bus? <laughs> no, no. I, I try to, you know, I tend to seek solitude a lot. And uh, yeah, some people just have loud voices that, that you know, they they just talk and talk and talk and that doesn't seem to bother them. But for me, that's not one of, one of those voices. I just have to kind of take my space and uh, and um, just save save my voice for when it actually matters. And that's how I how I make it work. But uh, I I know other singers are different. But but I think you know I can see a difference now. Even from when I started, I can see a difference in, in when in the singers I meet. Everyone's very aware nowadays of their instrument. It's it's not like it was uh, where there people were drink and you know most people now they have to take care because uh, touring is tough on on any voice. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about singing at home. Are, are you uh, someone who sings in the shower? Yeah, yeah, I do. It sounds great. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe one of these days you can record something and put it out there. You never know. Shower edition. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like there's unplugged. In this case, it's definitely unplugged. You don't want to take any electronic devices into into the shower, but uh, maybe yeah. something to think of. Yeah, definitely. I mean... There's also something with hot, warm water. If you're a singer, like warm <clears throat> air, warm water, it's it's all there in the shower and the acoustics. So it just makes you want to sing, I guess. Otherwise, no, I'm not. I'm not singing a lot um, when I don't have to sing. Uh, I have to tell you this story because I don't know if you're aware of, but you guys have Melissa Bonnie on one of the tracks on this new record. Uh, I had Melissa on the channel. I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. And at the time I asked her, what was one of her bucket list bands to perform with? And she said Camelot. Uh, and it would be an absolute dream come true to one day be on a Camelot record singing along with you guys. She's on, she's a, she's on this record. Uh, how was it working with her? Uh, great. I mean, I, I didn't have, um, she recorded with Oliver in Germany. I just made the parts uh, and send them over. So I wasn't there, but um uh, as far as the recording session was was really easy, and uh, then she she came <clears throat> to the tour in South America, South America and, yeah. yeah, and it was, it was she was great, great fit, um, very professional, great singer, and very sweet. So, I mean, just positive things to say about her, really. And um, she's going to be on the new on the tour that we used to embark on in two weeks in Europe too. So, uh, yeah, just great, and I think. Uh, you know, um, I, I remember her being in the audience actually uh, wow. at some of the shows, yeah, and coming talking, you know, after the, after the show to some of the people that she knew a little bit. And, and so I've seen her around the band, and um, but uh, no, she's done, she's doing a fantastic job actually. I really hope you guys uh, extend that tour from Europe to North America, and you bring her with you guys over here. Uh, I, I think it would be nice for us to get a little bit of not just Camelot, but a little bit of Melissa as well in the mix. Yeah, no, I mean, that would be really good because she's on the album, like you said, she's um, she's a part of it. And um, I don't know, hopefully that aligns. Uh, going beyond her and, and uh, you guys, you specifically in the band has had incredible guest vocalists on records. Uh, is there someone out there that you haven't had on a Camelot album that you haven't worked with that that you would love to in the future? Oh, I'm sure <clears throat> a lot, but um, usually that's a Thomas thing. Thomas uh, he keeps his you know eyes peeled for for new talent or people that will fit in a good way. You know, and, you know, sometimes I have input if if it comes to you know like I'm making a part for a song or making a vocal line that I just think about someone you know, but um it, it's kind of an organic process it'll happen what 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 it's meant to happen when the time's right and um uh, i do have a couple but uh uh you know see if it lines up i i um something that would have been really cool uh but that's of course possible because he's not longer with us but having like a michael jackson feature would have been cool you never know with the technology these days you guys probably could work something out <laughs> yeah true <laughs> 
Do you have do you have a favorite uh, Camelot song, or or is there a song that you guys have to perform every night, but by now you absolutely hate it? No, no. I mean, it's really hard. Uh, by uh, by now, I mean, getting a new album out because we're a band that focuses on new songs. Meaning, uh, if we play live, we have to ditch some old songs or you know some songs because we can't play forever and. Uh, well, we play forever, the song forever, uh, forever. But um, it's just um, it's just one of those things. It's that's the hardest part, taking away songs, you know, because we we want to play a lot of songs and we want to play songs that um, that we have played. I mean, Karma, Forever, March of Mephisto. That those are songs that we have played forever. Uh, we played them forever, and it's because it's a great live song. It's a great response from the people. It's kind of harkens back to the old days a little bit, and um, but it's getting harder and harder with every tour and every album because we want to push the new songs. One last question for you: uh, When you look at an album, new album being released, do you have a bar for what you consider an album to be successful, or is that bar different in terms of what people in the music business consider an album to be successful? Oh yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. I, I am just in it for making art, to be honest. I'm not. I'm happy if people, um, if people, you know, if you read comments here and there, that's that's fine. But uh, I try not to to go too deep in it and just trust the art. I, I mean, we're making the art that we're making, and uh, hopefully people will like it if we like it. And and uh, it, so far it seems to be the case. So. Uh, it, it, you're really going down a narrow and winding road if you're trying to please people too much and, and trying to make success happen. I think you just got to stay true to your music and your heart. On that note, Tommy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, let's get that passport going as soon as we can. And, uh, and <laughs> sure. I hope to see you in Toronto when you guys start touring North America for the cycle of this, of this new release. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Take care. Bye.